Welcome to Inside GE Appliances. We're over 600 people that signed up for the, um, for the event today from over 40 countries, which indicate a huge interest on, of what we're talking about. Uh, we're going to focus on maybe one of the most fascinating uh, transformation stories uh, live uh, right now in the world. And uh, I would soon uh, present uh, our guest in this uh, session. But before we start, I would like to remind you that if you have questions, uh, we will take those uh, at the end um, and please use the Q&A function. And also if you want to um, have an interpretation uh, into Chinese, please use the interpretation function and choose Chinese as your language. And with that, let's start. So I'm the director of the Ren Anhui Silicon Valley Center. Uh, my name is Dr. Annika Steiber, and we established the center two years ago. So it's a pretty young center focusing on the 21st century uh, business skills. So we offer webinars, courses, and also corporate programs. I've also produced a number of books, um, Many of those have been classified as mind opening, um, which of course I'm very happy for. So if you want to read more about my own work, you can always find me on Amazon. Over to the session today, um, I have with me two uh, distinguished guests uh, and I couldn't imagine two better um, companion to have with me in this session. The first one is uh, Chief Communication Officer at GEA uh, or GE Appliances, Antonio Boadas, that played an instrumental role in GEA's transformation. And next we have Marshall Meyer. Um, he is uh, the Sai Van Sai Professor em Emeritus and also the Professor of Management uh, from Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania but he also worked for Harvard, Cornell, Yale, you name it, uh, all the top league schools in the US and several Chinese universities. Um, he also um, happened to be an expert on hire and have been also working close with GA for, for several years. So um, with those in the panel, um, I hope that you will be able to ask any questions and also listen to um, their stories. The agenda for today is that I will start to set the stage, then we go over to the true story uh, with Antonio Boadas, we'll then um, listen to the expert analysis uh, from Marshall Meyer, and then we will stop and end with a discussion in Q&A where you can ask all your questions. So, Setting the stage, um, I think we can all agree that the world has changed. Um, I love this quote from Gary Hamill that equipping organization to tackle the future would require no more than a management revolution. And in fact, we're already there. We're actually in a paradigm shift and the traditional management style is fighting against the new management style. What we're going to discuss today is a case the GE appliances that gone from the traditional management to the new management style, which is absolutely not easy to do. And they did it in only four to five years of time, which is extremely ordinary, uh, extraordinary. Because co company um, maybe don't feel the urgency to change or don't know where to change towards or don't have the skill to change, we see the lifespan of companies that um, is decreasing. Um, and uh, if you look at the standard four 500 list, uh, the lifespan of a company have gone from 61 years down to um, less than 18 years today. In fact, in 2027, 75% uh, of the companies currently on the S&P 500 list are believed to have disappeared. In this new economy, you have to answer two questions if you are any kind of executive or board of director. If you cannot answer this question, have not designed your organization to live up to those, uh, it will be hard to survive. 
The first one is in an age of change, how to be fast and adaptable as well as focused and efficient. The second one in the innovation economy, how to innovate quickly and boldly enough to stay relevant and profitable. And then finally, in a creative economy, how to inspire employees to bring initiative, ideas, and passion. Each one of those create a huge change of the traditional firm. We already know that many billion dollar companies are gone. And the scary fact is that when they start going downhill, it's usually less than 10 years until they're gone from the market. Some of them still live, but in a very minor scale. And it's less than 10 years uh, of a process going from realizing that we need to do something until it's too late. The problem is that they, they don't, it's not a problem that they don't change fast enough. The problem is that they can't change. And the reason for that are many. But the major factor, and this has been stated in the Kodak case and the Nokia case, in many of the cases that have been well written about, is the cultural transformation that is very, very hard to do. To take yourself from one identity to a total new identity and change not only the behavior in the firm and how you do run your business and how you do your business, but also how to change the technical system. The hope is that there are already a new management model out there. It already applied and it's applied by many companies today. They are not many if you consider all the companies out there, but they are enough many companies to learn from and to show evidence that there is a new management model and create a need and an urgency, hopefully among all others that they need to follow. And as you can see on this list, it's not only software companies, it's not only internet-based companies, it's actually a number of hardware companies. So we have the Hire case, we have the Tesla case, we have the Xiaomi case, we have the GA case. There is no reason anymore to, to, um, to excuse yourself to say that we are not an internet-based company, we're not software company, we cannot become like them that is not an excuse that is valid anymore. The winner understand that it's all about why and how and not what. The common factors between those companies are one, they do see a set of new management principles that I think we will share with you today and, and we will uh, make clearer for you. And then secondly, it's not what you offer, that make you competitive. It's why and how you do it that matters. It's how you run your company that matters more for competitiveness than actually your product and your services that are easily copied and pasted. One of the cases that I just mentioned is GEA or GE Appliances that became the fastest growing appliances company in the US that won the smart home appliance company for four consecutive years and was certified as the best place to work by its own employees in 2021. The enabler, one of the enabler for their change was the acquisition. Hire acquired GEA in 2016. And to understand the importance of that event, you need to understand Hire's own background. Hire have been transforming its own companies for at least 20 years or more. Today, Hire Groups is Chinese multinational home appliance and consumer electronic company headquartered in Qingdao, Shandong, with over 100,000 employees and a market cap of $35 billion. And if you look at the graph, you can see that something really happened around 2010. That was the year when Hire officially introduced Ren Dan Ho Yi, their new management model. The insight behind that model came already in 2000 when the chairman and CEO 
went to the World Economic Forum and understood that with internet technology, he had to change the business of higher. He had four key insights. One was embrace the internet or become irrelevant. And with that, it was not just embrace internet as a technology, but as a way also to organize your whole business. Embrace technology innovation in order to create new demand and markets. You have to be bold enough, fast enough to assimilate new technology innovation, to seize the opportunity and to transform and capitalize on it. People encourage everyone to innovate. And finally, culture, fulfillment of own value. And with that, they are referring to the value of becoming and be able to be an entrepreneur. Anyone in the organization that have the capability and passion to become an entrepreneur have the opportunity to actually become one, fulfillment of own value. Today, you can certify your organization accordingly to Rendon Ho Yi. So this is not only an idea anymore. It's not a Chinese concept. It's something that is already established in the West, all over the world, and where professional certification organization can help organization be assessed and certify organization accordingly to how close they are to the principle of random lead. My own assessment of GA um, was mind blowing. In 2016, the company's top leadership focus was on cost efficiency. The leadership style was top down command control. The structure was tall, structured and standardized. And the focus on organization innovation was extremely low. If you compare that to 2021, you see that the focus have changed. The top leadership focus is now primarily on growth. The leadership style is now on delegation and coaching. The organization structure is flat, semi-structured, flexible, and the focus on organizational innovations daily is extremely high. And I don't know in other way to express this, then it's a different company. So GA in only a few years were able to transform themselves from a traditional company to the new company, well fit with a fast moving digital economy. We wrote a book together Antonio Boadas played a key role in this book as well, as well as the CEO, Kevin Nolan. And I would like to end my own uh, small uh, setting the stage um, part of this session by giving you a quote from Edgar and Peter Schein that I think you know well. Edgar Schein is usually called the father behind organizational uh, development and organizational behavior, as well as corporate culture. They said, the higher GEA appliance story embodies critical lessons and principles for 21st century business leaders. It forces us to rethink everything, to re-emerge as something better, more competitive, more profitable, and designed for the next century. Edgar and Peter Schein, 2022. If you would like to know more and learn more about the GEA case, this is not the last time you can also take one of our courses. We have two coming up, one in October, one in November, leading for exponential impact in the digital age where you will meet Antonio again, but also Google and dynamic ecosystem where you will meet uh, the CEO, Kevin Nolan, together with Marshall Meyer. And now we are finally going to listen to the true story um, and it will be given by Mr. Antonio Boadas. So welcome up on stage, Antonio. Thank you, Annika. And uh, I'll keep my, my camera on for a second to say hello um, uh, and to share the plan for today. Uh, I do have a, a couple of uh, material that I wanted to share with you. So one is a, is a presentation 
um, that have been given uh, recently to different forums where we explain the story, the true story behind the what we call the, the transformation, the GA transformation. And second will be a short video that we, sh we shared yesterday at the, at the Global Randa Hoyi Forum, where we tell the story about what, where we're heading to. So after what we have learned so far, so uh, we feel we're ready for a next phase. And that next phase is exploring new territories and we're using a totally new language, um, uh, if, we can, if we can call it that way. Um, so this is, uh, this, let me share the, the screen now. This is the story of a company that uh, decided to unlearn. And we decided to unlearn, which is one of the most difficult things in life. After 100 years, um, uh, this company was founded by Thomas Edison. And um, he was not only a, a fantastic inve inventor, he was, uh, he was a businessman. And he was uh, a critical piece in the modernization and the electrification of, uh, of the world and the US. So we had a very heavy heritage here, and we carry many flags as uh, the first of many things. And uh, that, was, that was a heavy, heavy, heavy lift for us for, for many, many years. Being part of the General Electric, the GE company, an American um, blue staple for, for, for more than over a century. Sorry, a I could you go full screen? I, I, I absolutely, I'm trying to do that. I apologize for that. Um, okay. So being part of, uh, of the GE organization um, was, uh, was extraordinary for us for many years. Um, it was, uh, was a critical element of our success until it wasn't. And what happened was that we went from an American icon to the, the shadow of our own past. And this happened because we lost track of our own existence. We forgot about who we were serving. And there was a question that I attempted to, to answer uh, while um, Annika was pre introducing the topic, is uh, the consumer-centric element. We were not consumer or customer-centric anymore. Actually, we felt that we were serving corporate instead of serving our consumers. So we, we, we lost track of our, our, own, our own lives and uh, there was no significant innovation. We lost contact and, uh, and insights from, uh, from, our, uh, from our users and, uh, and consumers. Um, we were not really easy to do business with. And in fact, some of our customers mentioned the other day uh, that uh, the company felt like it was run by legal because there were so many reasons why we couldn't close any deal with anybody. That was like any conversation was basically vetted by legal and uh, had clauses instead of ideas and, uh, and creativity. And we became very, it says only one, one time very, but it's very, 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 very bureaucratic. By, by this, we mean that any decision was made, any decision was made by, by a person who was probably not connected to the end product, uh, had no clue what was going on. And uh, it was measured in terms of the number of PowerPoint slides and the, your ability to storytell, uh, to sell the idea. So it was, a, was not a good place and actually was, was a bad place to be at for many, many of those who were there. I wasn't there. I'm, today I'm your, your storyteller, but I, I came up with Hayer. And this is the new chapter. And I believe I feel part of this new chapter when Hayer um, came as, a, as an option and uh, they, they disrupted um, our reality. So most of the time change comes from the, from the outside, Some, sometimes come from the inside. In this case, the outside became the inside. High year disrupted our company and they became the internal disruptors. And the only thing they ask us is when they said and they took over the company, basically they said, keep running the business. The only thing we ask you is listen carefully. There is a better way to run this business. It is called Renda and Hai. We're not gonna tell you to use it and embrace it today. Just learn about it. This is when uh, Kevin Nolan went to China and uh, before he was appointed CEO to learn Renda and Hai, which is, he attempted to learn Randan Hui, let me put it that way, because he came and he went to China and he actually, he was totally lost and he couldn't understand what was going on because that's one of the natures of Randan Hui. It is very organic and that you need to live and breathe it to actually really understand it. And it takes a while to actually uh, become part of the Randan Hui world because it is always evolving. And that one of, the, one of the, the, the realities that we're facing today as we are sharing this case with all of you is, this is not the same case or the, the same content that I on Annika or Marshall share a year ago because it continues evolving. And next time we'll get together, 
there will be a new chapter because it continues changing. That's answered another question that uh, was uh, was posted in the in the chat. Is the transformation over? No. Over the four, last four or five years, we became a totally new company, which doesn't mean that this is our destination. Transformation and Randanghui are a journey, not a, not, a, not a destination. And this is part of our journey, what we're sharing today. As a result, after four years, um, yeah, well, we've been doing well. Okay, so yes, uh, um, I do have some numbers I can share with you. We doubled the size of our business. We have been growing double digit. Um, we became the fastest growing company after being neglected by even the media. So we were not even listed uh, as one of the, the top companies in the US, the four or five appliance companies in the US. We were number four or five, five years ago. Now we're number one and uh, we all gain a, a share across all the business units. Um, how this miracle happened? Actually, it's not a miracle. Actually, it's, a, it's, a, it's the result of a very thoughtful intervention where we put in front of our organization four key elements for us to consider and embrace. Um, one of the magics and the interesting elements of this transformation is it was done by the same people who were not winning before. So the, the GEA team on their GE is very similar to the GEA team on their high year. The vast majority of the leaders, the vast majority of the managers were the same. What was the difference? This is the story. Before we joined high year, we didn't have a real leading goal. Our goal in life was to survive and we were the cash cow of the General Electric Corporation. So we offer uh, profits and we, we made sure that we were not, we didn't get in trouble. And that was pretty much the mandate. Um, when on their high years, so we were like, okay, just open your wings and how far you want to fly. And we felt that it was time for us to declare that we wanted to be the number one, the leading company in the US, which was for some wishful thinking. Um, that some uh, of our colleagues felt that this is not going to happen. So this is just like illusion, delusion. Um, well, we proved them wrong after five years. Yes, last month, two months ago, on the, on the, in terms of uh, market share and, uh, and sales, um, uh, we became the number one company in the US, which is meaningless for the consumers, right? But for us, it was like, okay, we made progress across all our business units and we felt good about it. So number one, we define our leading goal. Number two, um, we, we work on culture. And uh, as Anika was, uh, was referring to, one of the most difficult thing is just like, the mindset change um, is how do we turn managers who are trained to manage organization in a certain way to, to develop organization in a totally different 360 degrees uh, uh, change. So the first one we declare a few traditions we wanted to uh, reframe and change. For us, corporate was the boss, um, Fairfield or Boston or whatever the, the headquarter was, uh, located we we worshipped those corner offices and um, now it is quite different so now we have billions of millions of uh, consumers as our bosses um easy to say very difficult to execute um we were playing safe we were basically reacting and waiting for competition to move and then we'll follow them very quickly um we were Basically, we were organizing our business and our offering around pricing and around features versus experiences and solutions. And, that, and, and our employees were not really, uh, their creativity was not promoted or unleashed. So this is how we were. These are the traditions we wanted to get rid of. It sounds good. It's, it's not easy. And it's, it's a journey that we continue going through. Are we perfect? Far from it. But the, the little progress we have made have helped us to get to where we are today. The third one, and, uh, and uh, I'm sure you have heard not only from, uh, from Marshall or, or, or Annika or Gary Hamill. So this, this fight against bureaucracy. And uh, there are many books, there are many scholars who keep talking about it. This is super complicated because defined bureaucracy is going against uh, the, the natural laws. So it's just like people tend to look for controlling organization, controlling groups, 
um, is, is very, it's a very anthropologic um, concept that we, we want to be in control, we want to drive, we want to make the decisions. We, therefore, we created this construct and the businesses to, to lead and guide and make decisions. And um, this is the Taylorism that we're walking away and moving away from. Well, actually, this is the journey that we are going through. And this is what Hannah Hui is helping us to, is, is taking the, the, this big brick, as Marshall describes in, 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 in his uh, white paper, in his case, and, and, and turn this into, into something else. It has a shape of an atom, but it's, it's whatever. It is micro enterprises, it's, to, it's turning the company into small pieces that are closer and closer and closer to the consumer and have a full decision making, full right of hiring and firing, and it is zero distance to the consumer. So the closer we get to the consumer, the better we are. And that the better we are when the decisions are made by those who are in the front line. This is our journey. This is part of our intervention that we are defined bureaucracy. The CEO is no longer at the top. The CEO is a servant. And I'll tell you a little bit more about this elements on how we describe it and we define it, but it, it is a significant change where managers became business leaders. And, uh, and uh, Sherman Zan called it, we all need to be our own CEOs. Kind of, I think, is we all own our own destiny and we all should know how much value we create and how we continue um, accelerating value creation as uh, we get closer to our consumers. And the fourth element we have in our business uh, transformation and the intervention is another critical element, element in the Rana Hoye, which is uh, compensation or rewards. Um, so we got rid of the black box of uh, the compensation package and, uh, and the bonuses that no one knew where they come, come from. Um, the, the concept here, and it is executed differently by country given the, the labor laws and the uh, labor relations laws is, we are paid by users. So the value we create is transformed into the compensation we receive. If we don't create value, we shouldn't receive compensation. That's the concept. We know that this is not the case everywhere because yeah, there are some, some, some elements by law, but the, the, the notion is that you create value, you earn value. The compensation is tied to your results. There's transparency in the metrics and uh, and the, uh, in our case, in GIG Appliances, which is an American-based company, um, we, we have 4,000 or 5,000 employees who receive bonuses every year based on the company's result and based on their own results. That, that forces us to share ourselves, to share our margin, to share um, our cash flow with the whole organization. It is very private, internal focus organization. We need to make sure that we people understand that. We don't share it publicly, but we want to make sure that people understand the value they created with the work they, 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 they did and they do and, uh, and, uh, and, and compensate them for that. Okay, so here are the two, two last elements before I go to the video and to, I want to share you where we're heading to now. Um, our leadership model. So what we learned is that we can declare a new business, a new leading goal. We can claim that we are zero distance. We can say many of the things that I shared with you in the previous slides, but there are four fundamental things that we need to address, which is how we manage and how we help the organization to grow. So the, the CEO is no longer the person who flies in a, in a private plane and, uh, and uh, the only one who wears a tie. So the CEO is the person who, whose sole role is to create the conditions for people to create, for people to blossom. It, he creates what we call the creative freedom environment, and he promotes the co-creation. So his role is to remove the barriers that are preventing us from creating possibilities. Sounds like poetry, but it, it is real. The role of the leaders, which was the micro-enterprise leaders, the call it middle management, okay, is those who actually manage the large groups in the organization who are responsible for the, for the different business units, the role is, is to create the conditions for people to speak openly. Um, what what uh, we have been talking for years, like bringing your whole self to work. It's not about bringing your whole, whole self to work. It's, it's, it's coming yourself. It's just being yourself and offering what you have and what you think. Create the value you can create. 
The third piece is helping us, helping the employees to go from employees, which are highly dependent on, dependent on what my boss will ask me to do, to become an entrepreneur, which is letting my drive, letting my passion to define how, we, how, well, how I will shape my role, how I will add value. And the last one, which is odd, but it's interesting, is uh, making consumers part of our organization, is, is inviting them to join us. We've been for many, many years um, focused on serving the consumer without asking them, right? <laughs> or kind of asking them or assuming many things. And we asked in a, in a, in a panel or in a, in, a, in a panel interview or in a research, market research, we asked them a little bit and then we assume and in fear that, yeah, this is what they want. We're going away and we're moving forward. We're just basically asking them and inviting them, let's go create. Come and join us to make and develop the new solutions. I'll show you some examples in the video. As a result, yes, we, become the, we became the number one. But here is the, here's the trick. It, it feels good, but it is complicated. And I'll jump on the next one. It feels good, but it's it, everything, but it's not perfect, right? Why is not perfect? Because you can't change an organization from one day to another. And these traditions are really hard to eradicate. And by traditions, we mean the ways we have been doing things for many, many years. We're learning and acquiring new behaviors. That doesn't mean that we're getting rid of the old ones. They remain there, like bureaucracy. And on bad days, and globally, we are going through bad days, and, uh, and uh, call it recession or not, the market is not doing so well. Well, the risk is that we might, some people might want to go back to the old practices, because these are, these are the, this is the comfort zone. This is the, the bad old known space where we have lived for years. What is our battle this year? Making sure that we continue moving forward. The transformation is no, not over, it will never be over because we continue learning and we continue fighting against these antibodies, which are trying to take us back to where we were years ago. And the last two things are probably obvious for many of you who have been entrepreneurs for years, but we haven't been entrepreneurs for over a hundred years after after Thomas Edison founded us, so we were people from big companies, is the co-creation piece, which we are uncovering right now, the level of transparency and vulnerability that implies to work with people who are not engineers, for example, but they have desires and they come and work with you and, and help shaping and developing the product. Um, make you realize that you are not the smartest person in the world. And that level of vulnerability is important for companies who probably were pretty pretentious for many years. Um, so it's a cultural shift that uh, when you invite people to your house and you let people um, do your dishes and then walk around, well, you become one of many. That is the last point. And leadership, yeah, we're all equal. Um, and that equality is what is what drives creativity because uh, you create this uh, safe environment in which people can openly speak and can openly be themselves. Um, I finished my slides here and I won't give you time to breathe because I wanna make sure that I go to uh, the video that I offer you, okay? Um, that video will, um, will tell you where we are, where we're gonna be and uh, and, uh, um, and some of the key elements of the, of the, of the next phase of uh, our transformation, okay? I'm resharing here. And I'll go to advance, as I was taught. I'll go to video. I'll double click. And hopefully this will work. Hi, this is Kevin Nolan, CEO and President of GE Appliances. And today it's an honor to talk to you about how we're changing into a quantum organization powered by a human ecosystem. After several lost decades, Rondon Hui showed us the way. And in the last four years, 
We started with what we call the ME, microenterprise phase, and the results were tremendous. And what I'm most proud about is it became one of the best places to work in America through this transformation. In July 2022 was a milestone for this company. We became the number one appliance company in the US, which was our leading goal. But like every great company, we need to keep moving forward. And we're doing that through a new leading goal to be the number one ecosystem appliance company in the US. This evolution to a quantum organization is powered by co-creation and a human ecosystem. And this we feel is gonna bring us to places where people have not gone before. So strategically, we're looking at this with three new core growth vectors. How we're gonna grow the core, new channels, and new categories. And this will enable us to bring value with partners and others that our users and our consumers never thought was possible before. I'm now gonna pass this over to my colleagues to really get more in depth of what we're talking about in these three areas. With our drive to grow the core with NG appliances, our focus on the U.S. for the best margin remains on our luxury and mass premium brands. Driving meaning and definition within these consumer segments allows us to deliver robust brands that create memorable identity and disrupt a static appliance category. For Monogram, we focus on three distinctive pillars to align with the luxury consumer culinary, design, and wellness. With CAFE, we continue to evolve with fashion inspiration and will launch two new hardware options to enhance customization and get closer to personal style choices in the home. GE Profile leans on technology with a driving message of smarter innovation supported by smarter cooking and smarter cleaning. Similar to brands, we are driving disruption in our product lines by creating standout solutions and first-to-market technology. In Close Care, solving for chore pain points with the first front load washer to eliminate odor, our new top load solves confusion with built-in Alexa integrations to make chores more fun and the ability to multitask, play music, and ask for the weather. AI in front load creates better performance and smarter dosing, and a new all-in-one coming next year or one unit does double duty. Through co-creation, we work zero distance with the users to develop and refine new products and categories. Following their passions, our entrepreneurs work directly with communities creating unique products, such as the mushroom grower or the ice maker. This approach has also allowed us to develop and launch breakthrough products to address pain points and underserved communities such as the visual impaired with the talking laundry or the Shabbos Keeper for the Jewish community. Co-creation is a major component of our zero distance strategy and we expect future successes in growing new categories. These solutions come from listening to our communities. How do we get closer to creating products that make lives easier? We are solving for odor and laundry and dishwashers protecting families from germs and bacteria, supporting individualized religious practices, overcoming physical challenges, and automating food preparation. Appliances are about more than chores. They can also create joy. With small appliances, we tap into consumer interests with specific passion products for both hobbyists and consumption. From nugget ice to coffee connoisseurs, to culinary enthusiasts who grow their own produce and infuse foods with deep smoke flavors. We want to be there with them, with the right product that they must have. While the competition plays within the appliance boundaries, we are reinventing the game and advancing into new channels with high growth potential. We've gone back to our roots with small appliances and created the opportunity to disrupt a $10 billion industry. GEA is creating new experiences for consumers to engage with our products in all new spaces with our own playbook. We are bringing products directly into homes through our service network and pro channel endorsements, while expanding our portfolio to offer whole home solutions for builders. 
and we are reimagining the home for those new spaces where people vacation, visit, and stay. And the keys to unlock these quantum growth opportunities rest in ecosystems. Through connected strategies, we are enabling new channels, creating conditions for users for life as they grow with us at the start of their first purchase. As a quantum organization fueled by a human ecosystem of passionate entrepreneurs, we've transformed our company from an appliance company into an ecosystem of microenterprises, continuously co-creating products and services with communities and users. Our marketplace is now infinite, and we no longer are competing against any other company. Our only competition is our own ability to co-create and serve more users. So thank you, and we're looking forward to an exciting, bright future. Okay. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, was helpful. Let's stop sharing this now. I think it's it's absolutely fantastic, and um, I, I I just love this this ending slide, the GEA way, which also emphasizes the importance, right, that you make this change yours. It's, yeah, and we define the GEA to localize it. Yeah, absolutely, Sorry. and we define the GEA wave through three commitments, and that's why that's why that is so important for us. We we come together is the first one that basically offers our personality, right? Mm -hmm. We always look for a better way. And the third one, we create possibilities. This is what the GA way is about. Uh, this is how we behave. Um, and I think this is, uh, this is the energy behind some of the changes you can see and what we've been discussing here. Right. Okay, over to Marshall Meyer. Um, I cannot wait to hear uh, your questions to Antonio Bardas or to me. All righty. So I've, I've got a heck of a question for Antonio, but uh, time's limited. I know I want to take three or four minutes to reflect back before looking forward. Um, Antonio talked about the rapid transformation of GEA. Uh, he's entirely accurate on this point. Uh, this has been a remarkable uh, story of not just transformation, but of successful transformation. Um, it is the case. Uh, uh, what do they say? Indisputably, ind indisputably, indubitably, that GEA is the leading player uh, in the appliance business uh, in the US. Its market's almost entirely the US. Um, uh, here's what's ironic, though, and I want to point out a couple of things going back. Um, uh, the old General Electric um, uh, was always the model of management in the U.S., uh, a little like IBM going back many decades. Uh, if you bought IBM, you could never go wrong. Um, if you came out of GE, uh, you came out of their training program, uh, you'd always be a terrific manager. Uh, however, uh, I, 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 what I've learned from GEA is that the internal management of uh, uh, the old GE appliance division was largely neglected by GE and ran on very traditional principles. Um, you know, it was ripe for change. Um, and um, uh, there, there's uh, another irony here, by the way. Um, uh, many of you may know that Electrolux uh, made a bid uh, for GEA before Hire came along. Uh, Electrolux, uh, the Electrolux deal fell through because of antitrust con concerns. The Justice Department felt that uh, uh, the combination of Electrolux with GE would create a company with too large a share of the domestic market. Of course, guess what's happened under higher? Uh, they now have the largest share of the domestic market. In any case, um, you know, looking backwards, lots of folks are now critical of the GE management system. Uh, there are too many books even here to mention. 
Um, but that's the background. It was really ripe for change. Second thing, very, very important here. Uh, not always thought about under Rendon Huyi, uh, the selection of the CEO. Uh, Kevin Nolan has been obviously based on results, a terrific CEO. Uh, I think it's fair to say in retrospect that Kevin didn't fit the mold perfectly in the old GE. Um, and um, uh, a bit of an outlier, uh, he, he was uh, considered to be a technology person, uh, but not likely a future CEO of GE. Um, and um, uh, what was Kevin's problem? Uh, uh, well, a couple of things. Uh, I think the big problem is he really liked appliances. Okay. And, 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 and really, he's very tactile and he knows the product. He knows the industry. He knows the players. He's been around and basically loves the product. Mm -hmm. At the same time, he's a terrific people person. Okay, maybe an unusual combination, but there it is. Uh, I, I don't think his first priority was ever corporate. Now, hire comes along and says, okay, Kevin, we're going to go with your vision of the company. Um, we'll largely leave you alone. But, and now this is my third point, aside from the selection of GEA, uh, of the CEO, um, they set from the outset very aggressive targets for growth for GEA. Um, incredibly aggressive. Uh, in uh, you know after the acquisition, uh, 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 you know in 2016, 2017, and at the time I think people were spitting their heads and saying, "Can these targets be realized?" Well, look at the story. Look at the history. They have been realized, but understand that while Rendon Huyi is oriented toward the customer, it is also very much oriented toward targets for growth and internal competition for targets. And Kevin accepted and propagated very aggressive targets for the company that subsequently they've realized and realized in part because um, Look, they made some very gutsy decisions in 2020, 2021. They decided to grow the company, to invest in capacity at a time the competition was cutting back. But I think that decision was conditional upon the earlier agreement uh, or the aspiration to meet very, very aggressive growth targets. And I don't think, again, you could understand these targets. And, and, but there's an element uh, that's got to be added. Uh, Antonio already mentioned it. Set these targets, but then drive accountability very deeply into the organization. Um, uh, the, the other piece I'll just mention, um, uh, yes, defy bureaucracy. Ironically, the customer is king. But at the same time, there is the leeway, the latitude, the gumption for the CEO, the executive team to make very big decisions and do so and to implement them quickly, in particular, this decision to grow the company in an environment that looked to everyone else like um, uh, uh, there was very little room for growth. Okay. So with that background, I'm going to toss this question uh, at Antonio. Uh, look, um, uh, you've had this growth. The growth within the company, however, has not been even. I mean, all of the major pieces have grown substantially. I'm not going to put up a slide with all the statistics. They're impressive. Um, but uh, we saw a picture of Peter Pepe on there, right? Uh, Peter is the head of uh, clothing care, basically washers and dryers. And that business has had much more growth than the other businesses. 
which is interesting because um, Hire's principal competitor, uh, I could use the name Whirlpool, okay, started as, of course, a cloth, a, a wash, you know, a washing machine business, right? Whirlpool. Um, so here's 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 my question. It's it's kind of got two edges to it. One edge is this the internal ecosystem of hire. You know, what did the washing machine business take from the other businesses whose share five, six years ago was about double that of washing machines? Okay, so what did they learn internally? What was the cross-pollinization as a result of Renden Huyi? The second question, and it's a related question, is about the external ecosystem. You know, what did GEA do basically to integrate its, its apps, its customer service, its distribution, uh -huh. um, uh, and so forth, such that a customer who already had a GE appliance was likely to buy, more likely to buy, uh, a, a GE appliance in another category. In other words, people who had your cooking appliances, which are you know absolutely top grade, your refrigerators, largest share of the market. What made them more likely to buy laundry uh, when in the past these decisions had been somewhat dissociated? Uh, 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 and Antonio, can you offer us some insight on these questions? Oh, thank you, Marshall, and uh, very kind and. Uh... I think what we, we have learned over the last four or five years is that our internal ecosystem is as important as the external ecosystem. And uh, in the past, our different business units, what we call now micro enterprises, were all under a single organization. So they were competing for the same bucket of resources. Uh, they, were, they, was, they were internal fights trying to be the, the preferred kit within the same team. Being G appliances, a very strong cooking company, um, that whose forte was, as you said, in the in the in in the ranges and ovens for for many many years, the laundry business was kind of neglected. So we were not winning. In fact, uh, there was a point in which uh, some managers even consider um, dismantling and discontinuing that that business line because we were not winning. Um, that team. And the beauty of the transformation is that that team took the future in their, into their hands. And under Peter and some of the technology leaders, they said, well, if, if the company give us the opportunity, we'll turn this business around. What, where were the learnings uh, coming from? Obviously, there was a zero distance element here of going back to the market, and understanding what the market wanted. But the second was um, working with the, the rest of the technology team across the different uh, business unit refrigeration and uh, dishwashing, et cetera. And, and bringing together the best of the technology that was available in the company. And they invested behind that. So that notion of uh, having the opportunity of taking the future into your hands and not having to ask for permission unleashed everything. So there was not a magical formula here, it was basically we let people do what they were supposed to do, which was lead that business. That zero distance uh, um, decision made the whole difference. Now we went from, yeah, from uh, a not so good player in the marketplace to being the leader in top in the in the in the in, in the top load laundry and uh, and to having recreated and reinvented the front load uh, laundry business. There was co-creation, but also there was collaboration inside through technology. And some people move around different business units. Mm -hmm. And now there's something quite interesting, Marshall, is there is competition among the different teams. And people are asking for opportunities to work in different teams because they love manager, management. They love the opportunities of growing and winning. So now talent, man talent management have changed. Now it is no longer the HR person who decides, Marshall, Marshall will go to that team because I like Marshall. Marshall now applies for the role he wants based on his passion and the opportunities he wants. Um, that, that change is, is just, it's just accelerating the energy behind winning. That's, that's one, one, that one part of the, of, the, of, the, of the answer. The second is how do we make sure that people stay with GE um, and with the GE product? So there's, 
so many layers on that question. So one is, well, we have a we have created like a like a digital infrastructure that is called um, the uh, uh, Smart HQ, which is an app, and that that app is beyond that. It's, it's a business platform that will help you to connecting all your appliances and seamlessly going from one to another. That is one smart move. That is smart move also works for building management, building administrators, hotel managers, and builders. Because if you have a hotel and you manage the hotel, you know one of the, the most uh, significant cost uh, areas are, is the air conditioner in the hotel. You can manage through our GEA um, uh, app the air conditioning in every single room. And, uh, and you can make sure that even if the room is not occupied today, you can take that air conditioning down. We are creating some stickiness in the, to our business of making sure that when you, when you come to GEA, you stay with GEA. As of today, 50% of the homes in the US have uh, one of our appliances. So we are present in 50% of US homes. Our dream is to be even more present in those homes, not only with one, but many, many more appliances, and to offer the opportunity to many other, other families to experience GEA. Um, I think that that is the power of uh, what we're looking for. And, and being zero distance is critical because we're co-creating solutions with consumers in a way that they never, never thought about. Can I jump in here as we have four more minutes of this webinar? I just want to uh, say that we have got a number of great questions. Um, one is about uh, the pre-hire era. Uh, we have one uh, participant that seemed to be very knowledgeable about the time uh, before the acquisition um, and asked, um, for example, the number one, uh, to be number one, isn't that the same goal as Jack Welsh had for all his businesses? Uh, and also um, he had a question to me about the management model that uh, surely was known for innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, I can quickly start just saying that the, the, the management model in 2005 uh, that you asked for um, was not the same as what is in 2021. Uh, my data that I collected showed that the organization had become a, a cash cow to the GE uh, conglomerate. Uh, and the company GA was to be sold a number of times and the people were pretty miserable actually. And the focus was uh, very much on uh, profitability and cash, um, which also um, stifled the innovation uh, and, and entrepreneurship. So it, it was um, very close to what I showed in 2016. That, that, is my, that, that is what at least my data told me. Over to you, Antonio, and also to Marcia Wonder. Isn't the same goal to be number one? Didn't Jack Welsh say that as well? What is different today? You can declare many things. You can declare they want to be number one or, or whatever. So the accountability is what makes a difference. And enabling people to actually deliver in that is what, what is different now. Um, yes. So in the old GE times, um, the, the principle was answering always the question, that, would it make sense for us to continue in this business? If it makes sense to continue in this business, let's be number one. And the question is, there was not a real answer of whether it makes sense to continue in that business. So yes, we were asked to be number one. Well, there was not necessarily the full support to being and, and remaining number one. And the accountability was not taken to the lower levels. So it was just a declaration. And that, is, that was the difference. And, okay. uh, and the, the, another question that I saw popping up, and I will shut up now, it is uh, why are we, we glorifying the CEO? Is that against the uh, It's a matter of phases. So at the beginning, somebody need to start. At the same way, Randenhui started with uh, Sherman Zen. And you could argue that we glorify Sherman Jan. It's not about glorifying the individual. It is about understanding the thinking and following the direction at the beginning. But now it is becoming more organic. It is, it is not about Kevin Nolan. It is not about Sherman Jan. It is about Rande Huy and the transformation. And people are taking that transformation in their hands because we're creating a workplace that actually worked for us. Um, mm -hmm. We're turning a, a business that for, for many were super, super, uh, um, were not winning and uh, was not necessarily the best place to be into the best place to work. And uh, so we're turning the workplace a place where people want to go and win and create value. Mm. 
And with that, uh, we are unfortunately out of time. It's eight o'clock uh, Pacific time, which is uh, telling me that the webinar is over. And remember, this is just a webinar. Um, there are other sources. Uh, we even offer courses where you can dig much deeper into the GEA case and also RAN on OE. Um, so if you're interested, follow um, activities around RAN on OE. Uh, around the world and uh, just learn more. It's so much to be to be taught from the GEA case. Uh, I love personally the fact that it's it's an American case, which is also maybe closer to uh, to adopt for many uh, European companies. Um, so it's something that maybe is easier to understand. So thank you everyone for attending the webinar, for being with us today. Thank you, Antonio Boadas. For your time. Thank you, Marshall Meyer, again, for your expertise and your wisdom. Uh, thank you, our interpreters, and thank you, everyone, and have a great night, um, afternoon, or day. Thank you. <laughs>